I, I railed on him, he railed on you, and I let him know that I deserve what I'm going through. I admit that I'm a sinner. And I'm asking you, as a Savior, is there any hope for me? In the midst of this man's death date, he looks at Jesus and he says, Jesus, is there hope for me? Brother Cotton, what would you do if you knew somebody was chasing your boy? You would jump in their place. You would jump between him and the person that's coming after him or your daughter, either one. Even your wife, you would. I know. Why? Because that's just the love that God puts in our hearts. But do you know what Jesus did? Jesus looks at his father and he says, Father, I want to carry that sin to the cross. When I take that sin upon my shoulders, he looked at his father and said, please, don't butt in. Don't save me, Father. Just let me go and let me die in their place. Let me have their justification, their, their sins upon me. And I'm going to do away with it once and for all. But you know what? He carried them to the grave. But he didn't leave them there. He didn't stay there. He left them sins there, but he himself did not stay there. Because three days later, he came up out of the grave. And because he did, he left my sins in the grave. In the grave. He admitted. He asked. And you know what? My last point, and I'm going to shut up. I promise. My last point. He was accepted with eternal security. Well, that's almost cussing in some people. That's almost cussing to some people. Some people don't believe in eternal security. Some people do not believe in eternal salvation. What do you mean by this, preacher? Well, look. Look at what the Bible says. I'm just giving you a Bible for this. Verse 43. Jesus said unto him, Verily I say unto you, Today shalt thou be with me in paradise. He gave him eternal security. What do you mean by this preacher? I'm not talking about a free license to sin. I, I would never, God forbid, I, I would never believe that. I don't believe that you got to just uh, ask Him in your heart uh, and good as gold. Uh, you're never to worry anymore. No, no, no. you got to keep check of your heart. Uh, you got to keep check. you got to follow the straight and narrow. Uh, you got to follow after Him. Uh, but I'm telling you what, uh, there's an eternal security uh, that I have in my heart. What do you mean by this preacher? I know that I know that if I was to fall over dead without a doubt, I believe I would die and go to heaven. There's no doubt in my heart. Sister Reynolds, do you fear death? Brother Reynolds, do you fear death? Why? Why? Nothing to worry about. You ain't got nothing to worry about. Why don't you fear death? I don't know where I'm going. You know where you're going where you die. Cotton, do you worry about death? Nope. Why? Going you're going upstairs. Sister Foster, do you worry about it? No. Why? I about death. I read the word and it said. That's right. That's right because of what the word did. Because of what Jesus done. That's what I'm talking about. Do you know what Jesus said? Jesus said, He tells His disciples about this day right here. He said, do you realize that it is expedient for me to do this? He's basically telling them, I have to do this. There's no other choice. Why? Because if I don't do this, He said, I cannot do something for you. 
But if I do this, he said, I'm going to send back my Holy Ghost. And he's going to live in each and every one of your hearts. Man. And when he lives in you, guess what he's going to do? He's going to comfort you. He's going to be with you. Do you realize that the Holy Ghost has a name? It's not just Jesus, but it's called Comforter. Mm -hmm. How do you know this? Because the Bible says, Behold, I send back my Comforter. I send you back my Comforter. The one who keeps you. The one who guides you. Do you know what that is? It gives you eternal security. So you know what? For those who say, I can just take and live a license to sin. Let me tell you what. It's a straight narrow. But those that believe that you can't have eternal security, look at what the scripture says. Today, you will be with me in paradise. Today. Eternal security. He was accepted. He was given eternal security. My friend, all those under the sound of my voice even later on, let me tell you what. He was given a promise that he would be with Jesus today. And I believe that is how it is with us today. We give our hearts to Jesus and the day, that day we belong to Him. The very day that we give our hearts to Him, truly give it to Him. I'm not talking about those that just, Lord, I see Him on this cross. I believe that You took and You don't deserve it. Why don't you save yourself and get me off of it too? Not those kind of saving. There's a difference. You see, this man that was on the right knew that he deserved to go to hell. Yes. He admitted his sin. He accepted it. And because he accepted it, God took and let him have what he was asking. What was he asking? For a Savior. You know, he didn't even ask Jesus to come into his and to help him. Do you know what he actually asked Jesus? Would you just keep me in thought? When you make it to heaven, would you just think about me, Jesus? That's all I want. Just keep my good thoughts alive. And Jesus said, no, get up. Get up. Because you were broken. I'm going to bless you. And because you're going to be blessed, I'm going to give you the benefactor. Who is the benefactor? His name is Jesus. His name is Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He took, he was the one who, he would not have rebuked the sinner, but he was remorseful of his sin. And he asked for remembrance, but it came redemption. My God, my God, you can gain your redemption today. But preacher, you just don't understand. You don't understand what all I've been through. You don't understand what all I have to go through. Let me tell you what. I may not understand, but there's one who does understand. And who is this that understands? The Bible tells us as plain as day who it is. His name is Jesus. His name is Jesus. He's the one who died for you. He's the one who resurrected for you. And He's the one who put death under His feet. Yes. So, if you don't know Him this morning, maybe someone later on listening to this message, let me tell you what. If you don't know who Jesus is, I just read about what He did. Three days prior to this day, He died for your sin. He took your place. But because He died, do you realize that when you died in your sins, you was dead for all of eternity? But thank God about the one that death couldn't hold them. The grave couldn't keep them. <laughs> the stone couldn't seal them. <laughs> 
Oh, Jesus, the stone couldn't seal him. Well, what happened? He, he, he come up out of that grave, cotton. He took it. He come up out of that grave. And the Bible says that, that he tells his disciples. He says, guess what? I'm coming back. I'm coming back. I'm coming back. What do you mean I'm coming back? He's coming back. Do you know that there's coming a day where Jesus is going to split that eastern sky? And when he does, every grave is going to open. Every dead is going to rise. Are you going to rise with him in eternity? My God, my God. You can have this that I'm talking about. It's through the shed blood. So you're one of them bloody preachers too? Yeah. I am. I believe in the blood. I believe in the cross. I believe in the death. I believe hell is real. I believe heaven is real. I don't change my mind or my message just because it may appease the people because they want to hear some good message that, 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 that nobody goes to hell because somebody goes to hell. But you know what? Today, if you're hearing this message later, you don't have to go there. Because Jesus came to make a way. How did He make the way? He shed His blood on the cross. The Bible says that He was wounded for our transgression and bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our faith is on Him. Is that all right? The chastisement of our peace or however that scripture goes. I just, I got it all mixed up this morning. But anyhow, what it's saying is He took them stripes that me and you deserve. He took them. And because He took them, we don't have to worry about time. Praise the Lord. Let's stand to our feet. Look at your song. Baby. Let's stand to our feet. She's got a song that I want her to sing. Hallelujah, hallelujah. She's got a song I want us to sing. I want you to listen to the words of this song. Because it's about the blood, Sister Reynolds. Only through the blood can we have the cleansing that we need. If we don't have the blood applied to our hearts, Cotton, it does no good to call out to them. You've got to accept the blood. You've got to receive the blood. Sister Reynolds, did you know that that blood flowed from Him down Calvary's cross just to save an old rich like me? Just to save, Brother Reynolds, not you as a rich, but me as a rich. God... It doesn't matter what anybody does. Nobody is more wretched than Terrence Barnhill. Why? Because without the blood, I'm in the same shoes as the old drunk, town drunk that has nothing to live for. But because of the blood, it cleanses all of my heart just in taste and causes me to be able to call out. It shows me my iniquities and shows me who I am when I look in the face of that nail-scarred hand. When I see the feet of the one whose feet had nails drove through them all because of what he did for me. Hallelujah. Go ahead, Kenya. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Go ahead, Katie. Hallelujah, hallelujah.